Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to continue discussing the production possibilities curve. We will apply the example of barley production, and we will use the Russian Federation as our market or our economy that is producing two goods. One of those goods will be barley, and we discussed that in a previous video when we looked at constant opportunity costs. And when we look at barley production in the Russian Federation, we see that Russia is the biggest producer worldwide, uh, at least in 2018, of barley, uh, producing almost 17 million tons. In order to produce barley as a cereal grain, you need the resources of land and labor and capital and entrepreneurship, land to grow the uh, cereal grain, labor to uh, plant the seeds and harvest, along with capital goods like tractors um, as tools to um, increase the productivity of the land and an entrepreneur to organize the land, the labor and the capital to produce. In this example, we're gonna look at increasing opportunity costs uh, in contrast to constant opportunity costs. And in, as opposed to producing wheat or barley, it will be Russia producing barley or rockets. And in Russia, the state corporation that uh, is in charge of the Russian space program is Roscosmos. And they produce a variety of rockets. Uh, and we will use the example of resources being allocated to produce the R7 rocket in the Russian Federation. So let's go back to our original production possibilities curve. And in the last videos, we were really focusing on this idea of constant opportunity costs. So we had Russia producing either barley or wheat and essentially, since the production of either cereal grain is essentially the same, it was very easy to reallocate resources, land, labor, capital, away from barley production towards wheat production without any significant loss in the opportunity cost, where the opportunity cost was constant as reflected by this straight line, our production possibilities curve number one. And in our data, we saw that as we increased wheat production as we're going from zero to four units, we saw that we were losing four units of barley. So the change, as we've discussed before, this is just a little bit of review, was four. So the change here, there was a change of four, we were increasing by four, and the change here was a decrease of four. And we saw that it was a constant change as we increase production from scenarios A, B, C, D, E, and F. So the ratio was essentially for each additional unit of wheat or to produce an additional four units of wheat, we lost four units of barley, which we can simplify to a one-to-one -one ratio. Constant opportunity cost does not require that these two are equal. It could be a five-to-one ratio or a seven-to-one ratio, whatever it might be. Constant just being that as we uh, move from each scenario or reallocate resources, that the opportunity cost is constant. Okay? So now we're going to get into the idea of increasing opportunity costs. So I'm going to alter this graph, and instead of barley production, we're going to move towards rocket production. And then we'll see and understand this concept of increasing opportunity costs. Okay, here we can see that we have a change to our production possibilities curve. It is now bowed outward. We label it the PPC curve one. And this is to reflect the concept that we're going to be discussing, which is increasing opportunity costs. How as we increase output, in this case along the x-axis for R7 rockets, the opportunity costs will be increasing. All right, different from the constant opportunity costs, concept that we've already looked at, all right? Constant opportunity costs reflective of our ability in the economy to easily transfer resources from the production of one good barley towards another good wheat because the skills needed are essentially the same. 
the ability of the physical capital to produce either good is essentially the same. But in this case, it's completely different. We have, we're moving resources away from barley towards producing a very different good, in this case, an R7 rocket. Now, to help us understand this, we're going to look at the uh, factor of production labor, labor resources. And to keep it simple in the economy, we're going to assume that there's only 10 units of labor in the Russian Federation. And of the uh, labor units, we're going to say that there's two units that have the skills of being a farmer, two labor units that have the skills of at least having uh, graduated from high school, two units of labor that have graduated from university, and then two units of labor that are engineers, and then two units of labor that are rocket scientists. And this will help us understand this concept of e increasing opportunity costs. So let's start at scenario A. Scenario A, we see that we're generating 20 million tons of barley and no rockets. Well, if the Russian Federation wants to start moving towards rocket production, they're going to have to reallocate labor resources away from barley production and towards the production of rockets. So in order to generate that first unit of rocket, that first rocket going from zero rockets to one unit of rocket, to generate that first rocket here, we're going to have to reduce the barley production. And so we're going to reallocate labor resources away from barley and towards the rocket. And so of the resources listed here, we're probably going to take our most well-suited labor resources and have them produce rockets. And so we're going to take away two units of uh, labor that are rocket scientists and have them reduce their production of barley and start working towards building rockets. And because they are rocket scientists, they're very good at this. They have the skills, they have the knowledge, they have the, the background to easily produce that first uh, rocket without much of a loss in the barley production. It's not much of a loss in the barley production because they're not very good anyway at producing barley. So we see the barley production fall from 20 to 19 million tons. So we'll note that the change here is we've lost 1 million tons of barley in order to gain that one rocket. So it seems like we have that one to one ratio as we saw with the idea of constant opportunity costs. All right, fine. Well, the Russian Federation would like to continue to produce more R7 rockets. They want to go from scenario B to scenario C. They want to generate an additional rocket, increasing rockets in total from one to two. That's going to require the reallocation of some labor resources. So we're going to take our engineers, right? We're going to reallocate engineers, and they will no longer be working towards barley production. They'll be working on rocket technology, but they're not rocket scientists. So it's going to take some time to train them, to educate them in rocket science and how to build rockets. And in the time that they're spending to learn how to build rockets, they've lost opportunity to generate some barley. So we'll see barley production fall as we can see here, from 19 million tons to 17.5 million tons. All right, so I'll just make a note. All right, we're going now down to 17.5 million tons. Well, what's the change? All right, we see that we've lost now 1.5 million tons to gain that additional rocket. So there's an increase in that opportunity cost. And that increase in opportunity cost is reflective of the additional time it's going to take these engineers to learn the skills of how to build rockets. All right. So the Russian Federation, again, wants to construct another unit of R7 rockets. And that's going to take them from scenario C to scenario D all right, to generate that additional rocket. And they're going to have to reallocate some labor resources. And in this case, we're going to take our university graduates. All right. So two units of labor are now moved away from barley production towards rocket.
production. Now, these university graduates have some skills, they're educated, but they need to learn how to be an engineer. So it's going to take some time to take these university graduates and educate them in the science of engineering. And once they've had the, they've uh, developed those skills, then it's going to take some time to have them develop the skills of understanding the rocket science uh, to build those rockets. So in all the time it takes for university graduates to become engineers, to then become rocket scientists, they could have produced uh, a quantity of barley, which is reflected here. So we see the barley production fall from 17.5 million tons to 15 million tons. And we see that we've lost 2.5 million tons to gain that additional rocket. So the time it took these university graduates to become engineers, to become rocket scientists, they could have produced 2.5 million tons of barley. And again, the Russian Federation wants an additional rocket. They want to get to that fourth R7 rocket. In order to do that, they're going to have to reallocate resources in order to generate that additional rocket. In terms of the labor resources, they're going to have to now take two units of high school graduates, two units of labor that are high school graduates. And it's going to take time for them to get a university degree, to form the basis to understand engineering, to then understand the field of rocket science. And in all of that time, it took them to learn how to uh, build the skills in math in, at the graduate level, at the engineering level, at the rocket science level, they could have produced barley. How much? Well, we're going from 15 to 12 million tons. And the change here is now 3 million tons of barley. So in the time it took for them to become a university graduate, an engineer, rocket scientist, they could have produced 3 million tons of barley. Okay. Now we get to that last rocket that the Russian Federation wants to uh, construct. They want to build that fifth rocket. Okay. They're going to have to take all of their labor resources. So they're using all of their rocket scientists and their engineers and their university graduates and their high school graduates. What's left? The two farmers. All right. And the two farmers are clearly skilled at producing barley. And it's going to take a tremendous amount of time to get them to uh, get their high school graduate degree, to then go through the university uh, process to build the basis to understand engineering, to then understand the field of rocket science. And all of that time that they were spending to educate themselves in the field of the rocket scientists, going from scenario E to F, they lost the opportunity to generate 12 million tons of barley, which we see here. So we're going from 12 million to zero. The change is 12. We've lost 12 million tons to get that additional unit of rocket. So we can highlight how the opportunity cost is increasing from 1 million tons to 1.5 million tons to 2.5 million tons to 3 million tons to a sudden jump of 12 million tons. The rockets are rising by a constant number, but the opportunity cost of barley production is increasing. And that's what we mean by increasing opportunity costs. And why is that? Again, because of our resources. Our labor resources may not be well suited to produce uh, from good Y to good X or from barley to rockets. It will take time to train labor resources, to retool physical capital to assist in the construction of the R7 rockets. And because we can't easily transition these resources, such as labor, towards the production of rockets, because it takes time to do that, in the time it takes to train those labor resources, the opportunity costs starts increasing and increasing and increasing. Okay? So hopefully that is clear. At point A, scenario A, we're allocating all of our resources to barley production. Then we move to point B. We reallocate some labor resources, and we're taking our most suited resources, the rocket scientists. So we see that the opportunity cost is very small, only 1 million tons of barley, since these rocket scientists aren't very good at producing. 
and that continues. We go from scenario B to scenario C, we reallocate our engineers, we get another unit of rockets, but we get an increase in the opportunity cost, 1.5 million. Then we reallocate our university graduates and the time it takes to learn how to build rockets, they've lost the opportunity to produce 2.5 million tons of uh, barley. And then we move into the high school graduates and then the farmers. And with the farmers, we can see that it takes a tremendous amount of time to get to educate them in the skills to build those rockets. And in that time, they could have generated 12 million tons of barley. And that's it. If you have any questions, you can feel free to comment in the comment boxes with those questions. And don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.